Hello, everyone. I really like to see you here. Uh, well, uh, how many of you are the web developers? Can you write the? Wow, a lot. Okay, so you're probably familiar with stuff like uh, Node.js and Webpack and so on. I'll be talking about them. And uh, let's talk about WebAssembly. Uh, yeah, a uh, few words about me. Uh, I work in Align Technology. Uh, previously, I'm a JavaScript developer, both uh, Node.js and uh, browser. And uh, the most awesome thing, oh, thank you. Uh, one, one. Yeah. Oh, uh, and the most awesome thing is uh, that uh, I use uh, Rust and WebAssembly at work. Uh, so in uh, line technology, we use Rust with uh, WebAssembly. Uh, and uh, what do we exactly do? Uh, there are uh, two major products uh, in the company. Uh, the scanner and the aligners. Uh, so a patient can come to a doctor, I can scan the teeth, and then the doctor can uh, see uh, the result, and we provide uh, web uh, tools for doctors. And also, uh, really uh, awesome thing, that we can preview the results of the treatment. The aligners are designed to move teeth in a predictable way, and our tools uh, help us to see the outcome, what will be in the end. And uh, what about WebAssembly here? Well, uh, what is the most important thing when you do any updates, any improvements? to not break your product, because if a patient comes to a doctor and he runs an application and doesn't work, it will not be good. And uh, uh, here, teeth is a scan. It is a predefined object. Uh, predefined objects which we receive from the backend, but uh, the flash, the red stuff, uh, is uh, generated uh, dynamically. And uh, in order to uh, render uh, the lights uh, on the flash, uh, we have to do some um, computations, and they are quite heavy. Uh, there is involved 3D mathematics. And uh, let's check the code. It is uh, a perfect uh, use case for WebAssembly computations because we have uh, several arrays for input and uh, we have uh, an output array. Uh, well, and uh, I'd like to tr introduce Wasmb Engine. It is uh, a library. There are two parts of uh, this library: CLI tool and uh, actual library. So the library provides uh, um, utilities for uh, JavaScript generation. Uh, uh, 
so we, we can uh, uh, write our annotations uh, and uh, we can affect uh, the generated JavaScript. And let's check the result. So when we run a CLI tool, the following JavaScript will be generated. It's a lot of code, yeah? So it is possible to write all of it by hand. But uh, it's hard to do it uh, right, and uh, it's easy to do a mistake. And Wasp Bingen helps us here. It takes care of us, and it also does memory management. Uh, let's check uh, line 53. There is an array passed to WebAssembly. Uh, we, in WebAssembly, we have uh, distinct memory, linear memory buffer. Uh, so we copy JavaScript uh, array to WebAssembly. Well, here we do it several times. And then, line 60, we do actual calculation. After our cal calculation, we uh, copy the result from WebAssembly back to JavaScript. Uh, pay attention on line 65, uh, there is a slice in the end. So we just copy an array from WebAssembly memory buffer. And then we free the memory. So Wasm Engine handles memory management for us. And it's kind of awesome thing. What about, uh, what to do if we want to return two arrays? Here we have normals and binormals. We, we want to calculate more values. Uh, at the moment, it is not possible to return a tuple of arrays or um, an array of generic types or something like that uh, using Wasmb engine. Uh, uh, and uh, here is a trick. We can define, uh, with, with uh, Wasmb engine, we can define any JavaScript object. So let's call it callback. It will be our JavaScript object. And uh, let's assume it, it has a, a method, load results. In annotation, we mentioned that it is a method, it is structural, and we can even affect the name, which will be in generated JavaScript. And uh, this means that any JavaScript object which will have um, a load results method will be fine for us. It is so-called duct-typed interface. Well, as far as it can quack, uh, it is fine for us. And here we use the callback, and then we, we pass to our two arrays to callback. Well, it's slightly more complicated as uh, it could be with uh, tuples. I hope uh, the bindings will be updated in the future. Well, but it is a good example of uh, duct type interface usage. And then again, we can see the load results which is generated. We receive the data from WebAssembly, then here the memory is freed, line 27. Then we get the second array. Again, we free the memory. And here we finally pass the results to our JavaScript method. Again, it is possible to write all of it by hand, but who would like to do it? And uh, let's talk about performance. Uh, we already seen there were uh, three arrays in, two arrays out, like 60,000 items in, well, actually numbers, and 30,000 out. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, what I measured uh, in JavaScript, it's only time to compute the result. And in WebAssembly, we still need to pass the data to WebAssembly memory and to, to copy it back. So it is uh, actual computation and data transfer overhead. Really? Well, yes, it's unfair because uh, in WebAssembly part we do more work. We still uh, do this data, data transfer part. Uh, well, actually, it, mm, it takes probably 20% of time, of the computation time. Um, well, and uh, when I started to measure, I started with the uh, development builds. So, uh, in Webpack, uh, there are several profiles, like profile uh, development and profile release. And uh, development produce like st stuff like hot reload and uh, uses a lot of eval. So it's the JavaScript is slower, and uh, uh, I was using uh, uh, WebAssembly release builds because uh, in WebAssembly tools uh, uh, release is the default mode. So uh, most of all. Um, uh, the developers are happy. They have uh, more, more performance benefits. And uh, when I switched later to production build, uh, I was not that happy with uh, uh, performance boosts. Well, but there is, uh, uh, so in, in most of the browsers, it's like 1.3, uh, and uh, uh, we also support uh, Safari uh, on iPad. And uh, probably WebAssembly on Safari on iPad is the same uh, as JavaScript, but we still have this data transfer overhead, so it's a little bit slower because of this. And surprisingly, in Edge, even in production build, it was, it was like six times faster it was a little bit surprise. Maybe I didn't notice something, but well, in production, uh, the oh, the same thing uh, happens in uh, Safari in development build. It's also like six times faster WebAssembly than JavaScript. But when you compile uh, to uh, with Webpack uh, using production mode, uh, it uh, there's a uh, Again, gain like 1.3. And uh, how to improve the situation? The first obvious thing is to eliminate data transfer overhead. So there is a need to keep the state on the WebAssembly side in our liner memory. And the most problem here is that it involves a lot of changes. As I was doing the prototype, I needed to show that it works, we can trust it, uh, it will not break our application. So I just uh, decided not to uh, change the thing. Okay, let, let's, let's keep our uh, uh, overhead. It's still a little bit faster. We can build things on top of it. So. Uh, the first thing here is keep the state on the WebAssembly side. Uh, and the second uh, part, we can actually uh, use WebAssembly memory buffer to create JavaScript typed arrays. And uh, for example, if we use WebGL, we can pass uh, such typed arrays to WebGL. In such a way, we can eliminate data transfer overhead uh, uh, totally. But, uh, well, we will have uh, the application completely write it, written in Rust this way. Well, it's probably not, not, not the way for if you have a big JavaScript application. So, well, there's a, some things to think about. So yeah, it's a small example. Actual, 
computation took like two milliseconds, and it, it's not that often. Uh, let's talk about something more more heavy. Uh, as you know, there is no hover events in uh, WebGL, and we have to to do them manually. Uh, we use uh, three js and there's a built-in uh, uh, selecting uh, API in 3.js. So the next thing I decided to uh, to improve this part. Why it is uh, important. When we have uh, WebGL and uh, renderers, we have limits. Uh, we have, uh, if you want to render 60 frames per second, we have only 16 milliseconds per frame. And uh, selection in each frame took four milliseconds. So it's 25% of our time. It's a lot. Uh, we can actually uh, start improving it. And uh, I'd like to talk directly about the outcomes. Uh, I develop on a modern uh, laptop, and it's quick, and everything is fine. I always have uh, 60 FPS. Uh, I don't need to improve anything. Uh, but mm, our users probably have different devices. And uh, uh, it may help them to, uh, to have better user experience. Uh, for example, it, mm, if you have an old computer and uh, it may be laggy or slow, and uh, if we improve this thing, um, uh, the doctor probably will not need uh, to buy a new device, new computer, uh, and it will, would be easier for people to start user, using our application. Also, when it goes to rendering, we want things to be smooth. Uh, and uh, what garbage collector does? Uh, let's assume we are going to render a frame and there is a lot of garbage and garbage collector tells us hey wait wait a moment I need to clean the garbage and we wait and the user sees there is a stop because the garbage collector was cleaning the stuff uh, and uh, with uh, WebAssembly there is no garbage uh, collector so we produce, while using WebAssembly, we produce less garbage. And it's hard to measure in micro benchmark, but uh, uh, having less garbage, we will have uh, less uh, stops uh, while rendering. And also, we can deliver more features. Uh, initially, I uh, just used JavaScript code and uh, rewrote it directly to Rust. But we have crates Aya, and we can use uh, a lot of libraries from there. Uh, and uh, we can bring uh, more 3D features. Like previously, uh, we, can, we could think it's, it's too complicated, it's, it's too hard, uh, uh, let's not do it in the browser. But now we can start thinking about it. Uh, one example of uh, really hard feature is uh, 3D uh, collisions. Imagine we have two 3D objects and they collide somehow. And then we can create a new object from uh, two objects, a new geometry. It's really a matter of uh, not milliseconds, but seconds. It's quite heavy. And we can start thinking about doing such stuff. Uh, well, it 
also brings some problems. We have higher complexity and uh, we have to think about browser support. And uh, the second thing with the browser supports, there is a wasn't to JS tool, it helps us. We can generate uh, JavaScript from our uh, WebAssembly binary. The problem with it is when I tested it, it was two times slower than uh, handwritten JavaScript. Well, not that impressive, but if we have no other choice, we can either write fallback by hand or generate it. Well, probably sometimes uh, it's better to generate. And uh, here is the complexity. Uh, let's check line three. Uh, when working with uh, WebAssembly, we have to load it asynchronously by design. Here's an example of loading with uh, uh, Webpack. It is uh, compatible and supported out of the box with the uh, WebAssembly experimental loader. Uh, and uh, later, line seven, we load fallback, either handwritten or generated. And then imagine we want to start using the function immediately or uh, in uh, any browser. And we check if there is WebAssembly, we calculate WebAssembly stuff. If there is a JavaScript, we do it. And if there is no WebAssembly, we do it in JavaScript fallback. And uh, here's an example of our duct typed interface. You remember the callback we defined it previously? Uh, so here is a plain JavaScript object with a load results method. And uh, then we pass this object to WebAssembly and return the result. Kind of a boilerplate, more complexity, uh, and we have to think about uh, is it supported at the moment or not with this if else. And uh, the complexity with the callback can be solved with uh, um, JavaScript snippets. JavaScript's local snippets is a new feature which was recently added to Wasm uh, Bingen, and I can encourage you to check it. It can really help to reduce uh, the boilerplate. And uh, let's talk about WasmPack. It is a general tool to build, uh, test, and publish your package. It uses uh, Node.js under the hood. It can install all the required uh, uh, additional CLI tools. And a few words about um, quality control. Um, uh, we have was pack test to test our WebAssembly. Uh, uh, I personally prefer a cargo test for unit testing. Uh, when it goes to CI, uh, it would be great to have uh, reports. So cargo to, to G unit uh, produces uh, G unit uh, or, uh, reports out of uh, cargo output uh, from cargo test output, and uh, there is also a cargo audit to check uh, that there are no vulnerabilities in your dependencies. Finally, there is a headless Chrome. It is for integration testing. Uh, the whole pipeline look, looks like we have to build our WebAssembly. Then we have to build a bundle with uh, Webpack. Then we have to serve the statics. Then we have to use headless browser to navigate to the statics, load the page, and check that JavaScript uses uh, WebAssembly correctly. So headless Chrome is... Uh, uh, Chrome DevTools protocol to um, uh, create Rust Crate to uh, con control the headless Chrome. 
and uh, let's talk about future. Uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, movement in Wasm.js, a lot of commits, because MScript and folks are interested in it, and they are improving it right now. Uh, also, uh, well, when it goes to Wasmp Engine, it is uh, quite uh, low level. It's sometimes painful to work with. And there is an initiative, Go, a uh, model of our web toolkit, which will provide uh, a better, uh, more high level libraries. So you could just do uh, your uh, things without thinking about low-level stuff. It's just uh, an initiative, it was just created, and uh, if you have any ideas, just come and uh, uh, comment there, uh, and uh, there will be a link in the end. Uh, well, uh, also, uh, there is STD web uh, JavaScript bindings, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, libraries uh, use std web as a, as a for webgl renderings and overall a lot of uh, people use std web and uh, previously uh, they were not compatible with uh, wasm bindgen uh, and even uh, someone started to rewrite from std web to wasm bindgen but recently like f 3 or 4 days ago there was released support of compatibility between std web and wasp engine you can now use both and uh, it is really awesome it just uh, initial support expect bugs but i highly encourage you to, to try it it's a really cool thing uh, also do you remember the host bindings proposal in javascript community it was recently renamed to Web IDL Bindings Proposal. And uh, Wasm Engine uses Web IDL to generate uh, some of uh, JavaScript uh, bindings. And finally, again, new thing, uh, WASI. It is uh, a system interface for things like file system or, well, currently, in WebAssembly, there is no std out support. You cannot just print something. With Wasi, you will be able. It is already uh, on nightly. You can test it. Well, and that that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, how do you handle the problem of uh, debugging WebAssembly when something really goes wrong in the Rust uh, WebAssembly backend. So when you need to debug the outputted WebAssembly uh, binary or the wrapper JavaScript code, how do you handle this problem? Mm -hmm. uh, do you mean uh, the debugging the compiling infrastructure or uh, the... Uh, both. Uh, both the uh, Rust C compiler uh, architecture and also your uh, Wasm bind gen thing. Okay, uh, the question is how do I debug? Yeah. Uh, well, um, when I had troubles with uh, JavaScript and Rust incompatibility, I uh, specifically in floats, they handle floats a little bit uh, differently. I just compiled uh, my Rust natively. Okay. To, to native, <laughs> then debug it, and then, uh, well, so usually I don't debug, but uh, if, uh, well, I, I read code, there is a hard, mm, hard story with debugging. Uh, people yeah. work on it, they yeah. want to generate JavaScript, then generate source maps to WebAssembly, and then debug it through it, but it is uh, an idea, it is not implemented yet. Okay, you are incredibly lucky then.